Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to take a second to show you this is what you did on this handout is called a free response question. Um, and it's really important that you guys understand how to be very clear and answer the question in full sentences that are, you know, the grammatic, the grammatical um, importance is less. I'm not necessarily going to ever count you off for that, but I will always comment on it because you want to fix it. Um, there's some things that you want to like clean up quickly with your writing. Um, one is to, it, for my class, not to use the first person. It's not about you. It's about what's, what the question is. Um, they're never going to be personal. Number two is to make sure that every time you write about a country or a nationality that you capitalize the place, um, or the nationality, um, in English. So, um, Anyway, uh, what you were to do here was basically follow the directions in red. By the way, one of the hints for me is when they're in red, as it says right here, when you are done, delete all the red from the page because it just cleans up the whole page nicely because we will be putting them online. So, um, you know, by the end, you want to make sure that um, things are, are really neat. So um, let me see. I wanted to um, go through and look at the questions very carefully. You want to pay careful attention to all the different parts of a prompt because really this is like a mini essay. If you take out the questions, it becomes like a mini essay about the Netherlands and how they are functioning at a below sea level um, elevation. So it's first, it's very easy. First, first question was super simple, one sentence. What's the elevation? Uh, the bottom line was it's zero, which is at sea level. So, you know, that's going to lead to more questions down here. You were to compare the elevation map to the population density map. So you should have gone up to your, your map that you had and really say everything you could about the elevation. Where, where is, I, I'm sorry, the people, the population density, they want to know, okay, where are the people, right? But then where are they compared to the elevation? So where are the people in Holland compared to where the elevation is low or where the elevation is high? So a lot of you, um, you know, they were looking for like the pattern would have been, you know, you can see along the coastline that there's fewer inhabitants, not less. Less is like a grammar thing. If it's less people, you mean like less of a body. Their arms are there, not their whole body. So you mean fewer. If it's a number, it's always fewer. There are fewer people there because it's a low elevation. It's below sea level. Uh, it's going to be more dense up at the higher higher uh, elevations. And that's where you're going to see more of a concentration of people. Uh, so all those would have worked. You're basically comparing elevation to population density. But you had to mention kind of both of those in number two. Um, and how they correlate. A correlation means as the elevation goes higher, the population is also more dense. That's a correlation, um, but you don't wanna uh, you know, confuse how you're describing them um, just so that it makes sense. So number three now is gonna be longer because it's saying what environmental challenges do the people in the Netherlands face? That is one question to answer, right? Major environmental challenge that you've just talked about is that there is too much water. They are below sea level. Now, how are they addressing those challenges? This is where you would have used the reading. You would have looked, you would have told me all about dikes and polders. And some of you went into renewable energy, which is great. Um, that's talking about how they are more sustained. They're, they're definitely a very advanced, um, at, they're advanced technologically. In the Netherlands, it's a very wealthy country. They're right in the center of Europe, so they can trade with everybody, even though they can't really grow a whole lot. Um, but those challenges will become more, more of a struggle in the next few years with, with climate change as the sea levels rise. Almost everybody got that answer. And it was asking you, again, up here, to you know, use what you know about the sustainable pillars. Very few of you really did that. Um, some people went ahead and answered the last three questions in the book, which I wasn't really looking for. Um, but you could have talked about how they have been more sustainable because in the map you were describing, remember, you could have gone back to the map to use some of your information in there about how they are much more sustainable than in Cape Town, for example, with, you know, what they have to deal with as far as their environment goes. So, um, and, you know, renewable energy is a way of, of becoming more sustainable, but really here they were looking at, okay, how are they managing the water? 
Uh, so that's the biggest, the biggest part. So anyway, uh, an example of a question that was very good is this. Elevation is roughly um, elevation of half of the, the ranges below sea level while the rest of it is above sea level. So she, she divided that very carefully in looking at this, right? It's not all below sea level. So she, she really talked about, and, and some people were, when you were looking at your, um, this question, you, one of the pattern is along the coast, right? That's a, that's a pattern that you can see. Um, yes, it's linear, but it's really just along the coast is where they're going to have the most danger with that sea coming in. Um, and then the reason why this, you know, further up higher elevations are going to be more concentrated because people don't want to live there. So the distribution of the Netherlands has a high density overall, which is true. Then she went into some more descriptions about the numbers using those from the legend um, and uh, talking about where they are compared with the rest of the country. Concentration of population reveals that they cluster towards the south of the country, especially in the south southwestern coast, right? Um, It's actually would have been eastern, southeastern coast, but I didn't catch that. Um, and then just again, the pattern that she didn't really need to write that much. Um, but down here, too, again, talking about the flooding, she's there's obviously a lot of reading that happened in here about the Netherlands that she's pulling out to use as evidence for why this is all a problem. Okay, so. Um, Anyway, make sure that you're you're writing really clearly and, um, you know, use all your resources. I normally this is an in-class essay and you're not allowed to use any notes because you've already done all the reading. Um, but that's why we take notes uh, so that you can go back and use them. So during for this week, um, I'm going to uh, give you another FRQ that you will not know until after you've done all the reading. So you want to make sure you have a good understanding of the main themes. Um, but then be ready to, again, you know, use a lot more detail this time around. Okay, that's an FRQ.